have you shaped it in your mind? Total performance. Now the all-new Toyota Supra brings it alive. Super power created by a 3-liter, 24-valve, 200-horsepower engine. Super suspension, racing type, double wishbone, fully independent. Super cockpit, where you perform. The new Toyota Supra, performance without compromise. Now the Supra dynasty begins. Who could ask for anything? Warning, this project involves high current and users should have expert knowledge, follow strict safety precautions, and assume all risks associated with electrical work. Basically, I have a box of leftover Mark III Super parts, harnesses, connectors, what have you, and a uh, buddy of mine that uh, tries to keep every Mark III part that he can alive, nice enough to send me this harness and uh, fuse panel out of a Mark III. So essentially what we're going to do with it is um, we're going to use this portion of this old uh, fuse box to install in, in my fuse box and another project's uh, fuse box on this location. Uh, we have actually a few spares here and uh, here's another one right here. So we're going to essentially reuse this so that we can expand and add more circuits to the factory fuse box. And I'll show you how in a minute. We're going to keep the 100 amp fuse for the factory fuse system. It's a network of, um, it, it's distributed throughout the car. Uh, there's multiple fuse, loca fuse box locations, uh, fuse panels in each kick panel and the passenger and driver side. So uh, we're going to keep that fused with a 100 amp fuse. Most people are upgrading their uh, audio system or ancillary items like lighting maybe. So that'll basically be handled here. I have heated seats that I've added. I've also added a fuel pump circuit and some other things as well. So all that will basically be fed from this, this secondary system. Essentially what this extra circuit is going to do is we're going to have a 180 amp fuse because I have a high output alternator, 180 amp Sequoia alternator. We're going to go through a 180 amp fuse. This one is not it, but uh, it's going to go through the lugs for uh, 180 amp fuse capacity. And that's basically just going to fuse between the battery and the alternator. Then we're gonna come off from that and go to the 100 amp and we're gonna feed the 100 amp and then that's gonna break off and distribute to the rest of the car as it did from the factory. There's only a few wires that'll be a little different than the factory, but in my opinion, it'll actually be more uh, protected than it used to be. So everything will be fused and not overloaded whatsoever. No more burned, uh, fusible link and um, I think it's just the best way to go. I'm going to start looking at how to actually get this wired into the car. All right, so I'm going to show you how I have the wiring here. The battery directly goes in through a four gauge into the original position for the primary fuse, which uh, we've upgraded to 180 amps here. But the other connection to that is the alternator. So this is the four gauge going to the alternator. This is a thickest white um, wire that I could find. So trying to neaten all this up, I've got the white wire coming. It's, it's um, connected with the four gauge into a one ring terminal. So there's two wires coming off. Again, this one goes to the alternator. This one loops around, kind of folds underneath here, just like a little bit of a service loop here. It comes around, is right here. You can kind of see it here. And then there's two white wires that were originally coming from your factory fuses, again, in this first block here. And they come out of this. And I just, again, did a loop. There's another white wire. That's a pretty large wire. Again, I just made a loop. 
it's hard to see here, but there it is there. Made a loop here and comes around and it goes into what I'm going to use is basically the factory fuse, which is gonna be a hundred amp right here. We're gonna put that here. And the reason why it fits that way is because of the way that the uh, plate here is beveled. You can see it fits pretty well here. Um, this is the circuit that I'm adding for fuel pump. And uh, we have a few wire pins that just basically push into this and then they lock and latch. You can see there's one here that um, has been removed right here. It's pretty easy to just kind of push it over with a, a flathead screwdriver, a really small one, like a, like a micro-sized jeweler's screwdriver. And they basically will push right out. Here's, here's what I'm talking about. It's pretty easy to depin these. So you just pull them out from the backside. So basically what this will do is it'll allow us to have a few extra circuits if you choose to. You could maybe add a car alarm or, you know, a few accessories if you want. That'll be uh, basically very higher current capacity. I would not put a, like a car stereo or amplifiers in this circuit. I would have that be a separate fuse off from the battery. So essentially, again, all that we've really added in this primary block here is a larger 180 amp fuse for the alternator that we're upgrading. And to not take any risk and enforce 180 amps on any other wiring that's going to other fuse boxes in the car, if you're ever in an accident, you don't probably want 180 amps of uh, uh, fused power going to those smaller wires that go to the other fuse boxes. So essentially, just to recap here, 180 amp, we've added that, we've upgraded it. We have two four gauge wires feeding it, one alternator, one battery. Another pops off and feeds the factory electrical system, which is here. And this is the factory 100 amp fuse. And then basically we're going to daisy chain all that, all those um, feeds to your car with this 100 amp fuse. These are essentially add-ons. I've got heated seats in my system and I might also add a few other things inside. So that's going to be what this fuse is right here. This is for the future. So I, I removed the pin. This, I don't have the pin. So I just basically shove the wire in there. I'll pull this out so you can see it. So there's the uh, ring terminal, and you want to use a uh, like marine grade heat shrink kind of. Um, it's uh, basically an adhesive heat shrink. You don't want to make the collar too high because we need to uh, essentially push this down and make it as low profile as possible. Just because when this goes on the fuse box. You don't really have a whole lot of depth. So the wires have to be pretty clean coming out of this. They can't stick out much. So that's about as much as you want there. What what was essentially originally from the system is uh, the battery fuse. And so um, that's one of the feeds coming off the 180 amp fuse. One of these three. Other two white wires again are going to original circuits that were fed from battery circuit. So that's kind of keeping it the way it was. With 100 amp fuse on this side. Um, the black wires are essentially all tied together and we have three black wires. There's one coming from the fender that originally looped into um, a butt connector or a splice with like three or four other black wires. I'm running that directly all the way up into here. The other black wire is fed from my fuel pump that again we have added here. I just kind of looped that in here. The third black wire is essentially just a uh, feed that then goes to a splice. And essentially what we're doing is we're splicing all the black wires together that are remaining. With the exception of this red one that I've added again because I've added two circuits here. So you can kind of 
make your system, you know, custom tailored to your own needs. You just essentially really want to uh, keep in mind this is a high current. You don't want to melt down in this, um, you know, fuse box. Been very careful about, you know, making sure these are tight, they're clean connections. Uh, again, we have strain relief here, so the wires aren't going to pull out. I've done pull tests on all of my crimps. I'm sure that they're uh, secure. So this guy just kind of floats in here. I had to cut some, some tabs off inside of here to make it float in there. But the wire is so stiff and it's uh, backed by a plastic plate that goes um, secures the bottom side. I'm not really too concerned about having to secure it more than this. I'm fighting with one hand to push it back in. So we should be good. Um, I think that's covering everything here. Um, my heated seat is this red wire here. That's going to my heated seat circuit. Um, my fuel pump is right here. It's labeled here. And that's going to this right here which is the circuit that I've added here to the original block here. So essentially, it's just like it was from the factory with the exception of adding a few extra circuits, 180 amp fuse for the alternator that's been upgraded. And then again, keeping everything on a 100 amp system or 100 amp fuse, just like it was from the factory. So this is basically, I, I deem this safe and um, I've also, before I crimped, you want to add some heat shrink in there with these butt splices that you crimp. You definitely don't want to uh, forget that you're going to have to cover it with uh, some kind of, you know, uh, insulator. Um, again, I'm using heat shrink that has the adhesive inside, uh, which once this is shrunk, it doesn't like to bend, but that's okay. These, these are, this is going to be straight right here. And there always was a little loop built into the to the factory harness and it was basically all just taped together and uh, that's essentially how it is so that is how to do this in a nutshell um, you will have to pull some of these wires out to make them uh, like this you know I've, I've kind of reconfigured some of these pins in this block here and I've reused much of the wire if I cut out a uh, connector or uh, change things like in the ring terminals Basically, this is taken out of a junk Supra, and these were the ring terminals that went to it. So essentially, I've cut the wire and reused it wherever I can. And uh, had to buy a few pins to, to uh, you know, make this happen. Um, I have a few terminal kits that are uh, heavy-duty crimps. And the ring terminals I used are the smallest that I could fit on the post. And these ones right here, which are marked sure it's a SC 25-6 and they fit just right they fit um, three three of these just right four were rather tight actually no I did three and three I'm sorry yeah so four would have been too tight that's why I chose three and then I'll have um, three here going in two looping around and essentially that's feeding all the other little fuse uh, networks in here so that's it